Hello. Um, yeah, first of all, thanks very much for being a fantastic audience. Um, I, I just came from Electric Picnic at the weekend, and I did not expect to see a better audience out here, but you've been brilliant. I got, I got applause for telling you we would start at 7, so this is fantastic. Um, first of all, some apologies. Um, I titled my talk Feedback.js. That was a lie. There'll be very little, if any, JavaScript in this talk, so sorry about that. Um, my name's David. My Twitter handle is hidden behind that video of me. Um, I, I work for Zendesk. Sometimes I write software. I'm sorry about that as well. Um, so the, the talk is about feedback. And I wonder, what do people think of when they hear the word feedback? What do you think I mean when I say feedback? I heard Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> that would be pretty good feedback in my book. Um, Something's wrong, maybe, okay. So feedback means a few things. That's, that's why it's kind of an interesting concept, and it can mean lots of things. I did some original research on Wikipedia um, about what, what feedback can mean, um, and it can mean a few different things um, with different fields in mind. Um, for the most part, I'm kind of thinking about feedback in the engineering sense, which is called negative feedback, which is a really stigmatizing name. Um, th there's a re reason why it's called that, but it can kind of make it seem a little bit scary. But that's most of what I'm going to be talking about tonight. Um, so first of all, I need to tell you what a system is, because we're going to describe a system of feedback. Um, and for my purposes, a system is something with an input and an output. Um, and a system without feedback is, is just that. Um, you can think of it as a black box. I have nothing against systems without feedback. You can build some really clever things in these systems, but they can't really correct themselves. If the output is um, not doing quite what you wanted, it's going to keep doing not quite what you wanted forever. Um, so if you can describe a really consistent process, that's fine. But if you need something with a little bit of correction built in, a simple system without feedback is not going to do the trick. Um, whereas a system with feedback is basically anything where the output is fed back into the input in some way. Um, so we still have our input and output, and then something happens, and then the output goes back to the input, which is a little bit odd. Um, you're still using the output for something, maybe, um, but it's being fed back into the input. And that's really important because it means we can make clever decisions based on what is happening um, inside the system. So this is the abstract concept of feedback. Um, it makes a little more sense when we make it more concrete in terms of a real system. Um, but I'll get to that in a second. Uh, Think of feedback in code. Um, if we say system A is some function, it has inputs and outputs, we're kind of familiar with that. You might want to think that feedback is the same as recursion, where you call the same function um, from inside it. It's not quite the same. Th this would be recursion, where you have the system inside itself repeated a number of times, hopefully not infinitely. Um, which ironically looks a little bit like video feedback, um, which is when you point a camera at the output video. Um, no, I won't demonstrate right now. Um, but that's, recursion is not quite the same as feedback. It's close, but it's not quite the same. But if you think of feedback in terms of a, a thermostat in your house, you say, I want the temperature to be 17 degrees. Okay? And you have a boiler generating heat. And you're passing some power rating into your boiler, saying, generate this much heat. The way a feedback system works, is we take the output of your boiler, the heat generated, and we measure that, and then we subtract your target heat. That's, that's why it's called a negative feedback system. If you were just feeding it right back in directly, it would keep heating your house forever, um, and it would actually be amplified, which is not quite what you want if you're trying to hit a target. So we, we subtract the target heat, and then we say, set the power to this much. So if you're closer to your target heat, you shouldn't be heating as much. Um, and that's, that's a thermostat feedback system. Um, this is an interesting graph about feedback systems. I really like it. The ideal line is a blue one. Like, as soon as you choose a target, you want to go straight to that target and hold on to it. Some systems will overshoot and then gradually settle on the target. Other systems might get there a bit more slowly. Um, there's some really interesting maths behind this. I recommend checking it out. Um, obligatory JavaScript portion of this talk. Um, you can, if you want to, think of almost any system in terms of feedback. Um, if you think of React, we're, we're passing in some input, that's our, our state of the world. Um, React takes that and creates DOM nodes. Um, and those are, that output is given to a human being of some sort. Um, and then the human interacts with this and might change the state in some way. 
and then the state is passed back into React and we continue the whole cycle again. Um, this can also be applied to life. Um, you might have some goals or plans. You'd pass that into the system of doing things, um, which gives you experience and you might filter that through some reflections or a diary perhaps, and then make some more goals and plans. Um, so you can really think of anything in terms of feedback, um, and that's my entire talk about feedback. Thank you.